Lovely Plus Two friends, welcome back to the channel. A very warm welcome to you all. If you are new to the channel and you like what you see and you haven't done it already, please don't forget to hit the little subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and let me know you like it. Welcome to my boudoir. <laughs> So today we are in a different setting and I know what you're thinking like Teresa, why, why are you sharing your bedroom with us? Well, the crux of it are, there's no light. There is no light. So every single time I've tried to record this video, there has been a problem. So this is sort of like take three of this video and that's not today. So this, this monthly update was already pre-recorded back last weekend. But so many things happened. I was dog sitting a dog that was going crazy. I'll probably share some footage here for you just so that you know you can you can see the crazy dog. And because I <coughs> Hendrix, and because I wasn't a hundred percent sure whether it was gonna be <coughs> excuse me a minute, I need to sort this dog out. So I've just given him a chew, hopefully to occupy him, but he's just put the chew back down and he's staring back out the door. All this over some squirrels. It's unbelievable. The dog is infatuated with the back doors, even though the blinds are shut. So, like I was saying, so, so I thought, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. We'll have a little go. <coughs> Hendrix! Sorry, I need to sort this dog out again. Um, and you can hear him in the background, and he's barking, and I had to keep switching the camera off. Then by the time I actually recorded it, and I went to edit it, I realized that it was a monster video. I've literally got so much to share that I was like, I can't put all this in one video. So, as an explanation, so for October, I'm not sure that this will happen going forwards forever, but at least this month, there will be two videos. There will be one that is solely stitchy related and all about the stitching, and then there will be another video that is basically about the knitting. Now, Probably there's a very small knitting video versus a stitching video, but literally when they were both together, it was just too long, people. It was far too long. So I thought I would break it into two. So I'm going to try and re record this as two completely separate videos for you. But to do it meant all week this week, it's been crazy. I've had no time to do it in the mornings before I've started work which is when I have light, which is when I can be in any other house, any other part of the house. But because I'm now sitting here doing it at night time, this is the only room that I can actually have any real decent light without lots of shadows and bits and pieces. So there's your explanation. Welcome to the boudoir. We are not in the upstairs. You know, the, the conversion hasn't been completed, although I do need to do an update on the loft conversion. So many people have asked, I will get to that, but let's get October update with done first, shall we? So what to tell you, I've got my iPad here perched in front of me so that I don't forget all the things. Most importantly, what to tell you, so much happened in October. Um, I had another stitching retreat, so I went to the Mirabilia, not just Mirabilia retreat, where I did the video and I uploaded that, but there was lots of things that came from there. Um, like I say, I was dog sitting, so I was dog sitting for 10 days. So again, I don't really think I got as much stitching done as I would have liked, but I did do lots of doggy type stuff and it was glorious. It just reminds me how quiet my house is and I, oh, I'm i missing him terribly. I loved the walkies, I loved the playing, I loved the, yeah, I just loved the little pitter patters of feet and the cuddles and yeah, it's, it's very quiet again all of a sudden. But I'm extremely busy, so... Although it's too quiet for me and I do feel a little lonesome, in all honesty, I've been a little busy to be that lonesome as yet. So from last month, a huge thank you to Cindy Jensen for buying me a coffee. Thank you so, so much. Very, very generous and very much appreciated. Like I say, I was doggy sitting for 10 days this month. So although I would love to sit here and tell you I've, I've been stitching like a crazy woman, the reality is that's not what I was doing. I was doing lots of playing with doggies and yeah and but he was full of energy um I'll, if i can i'll get some video footage in so you can see sort of you know the antics that he was getting up to he, he was a crazy little dog um but he was absolutely lovely and it does remind me now how quiet my house is because obviously i'd sort of i'd sort of got over losing fudge but i was still lonely but I was so busy that it was like, well, I don't really have time to be that lonely. But then having Hendrix here 
my little crazy dog, um, it just reminded me how much fun it is to have a little four-legged friend running around the house. And although he was crazy and he was into everything and he made, you know, he was high energy, high energy doggy. He also used to do lots of loving and lots of cuddles. Um, he just wouldn't sit still long enough for me to sit and stitch. That was the only problem. But he was a cockapoo, so he's a half cocker spaniel, half poodle, so much more higher energy than my little cavalier King Charles Spaniels. So, but yeah, I had an absolute ball with him. So the fact that I didn't do as much stitching as I would like, to, I did have lots of cuddles from a little furry friend, which makes me realise how much I'm missing having a poochie in my house. But... I'm super busy at the moment and there's lots and lots of things going on so even if I was starting to come to the point that it's like do you know what I'm just going to go and buy another dog because I, I need a dog in my life um, the reality of it is you know right now is probably not the best time for that so I'm trying to be patient I'll see how I do I can't guarantee that sort of by the end of the year I won't have a little four-legged friend <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm trying to sort of say, give yourself some time to get Christmas and stuff over with and get the build finished and just settle down and, you know, get my surgery done, get back to work, then see whether, you know, getting a dog or getting another dog is going to be the best choice right now for us. So that is a little bit of life update. Anything else, obviously, I'll talk about on the way through the video because, yeah, there's a lot of video. So what to tell you? So let's start off. I have FFOs, people. I know. I know. I'm like, oh, you know when you have one of them heart swell moments? Well, you remember that the lovely Andromeda and Autumn Promise went off to the framers. Oh, they are back. And they are lovely. So let me... Oh, grab... Oh. Autumn Promise first. So here it is. Absolutely love, love, love. Let me see if I can stand up. So I decided to go with um, like a, it's almost like a sage green uh, matte board at the back. Just so that the areas behind, it, it just made the, the cut work stand out a bit more. And then I went with the, um, like the pink, the pink matte board to try and match the stitching so yeah so I'm I'm so so pleased um I did go the extra mile with the glass so I went with the museum grade glass so no glare um and it doesn't change the look of the stitching it is a much more expensive glass but as you can tell there's there's very little there's very little reflection which means you actually get to see the stitching. And given that my house currently, at the moment, through all the building works, is constantly dusty, I'm quite pleased that I can still have it hanging up. And it's got glass over it, so my stitching is protected. But yeah, super, super happy with that one. And now I just need a room that's completed for it to go in. But at the moment, it's hanging in the hallway. But absolutely love that one. And then the other piece that is an FFO is the lovely Andromeda. Now see, I'm saying it again, the lovely Andromeda. Now it wasn't so long ago that I'm like, me and Andromeda have fell out. Well now she's back from the framers. I have to say I'm in love with her again. So here she is. Here she is again. But this time looking much better than she did the last time. So with this one, we went with the black matte board to complement the black areas and the black beads to try and make that pop. Um, again, museum grade glass. So that there's very little reflection. And I have to say, I'm absolutely loving how she's come out. So there she is in all her glory. And I thought that the black just really sort of brought out the details the details of her. So yeah, I am super, super pleased with the FFOs. You know when it's just like, I don't think I've ever been able to do this, where you can sort of have like two FFOs together. See, so I've got 
my FFOs, people. You know, and it's just like, this is like unheard of. So it's a moment. It's momentous. The fact that I can go months, possibly years, without any fully finished objects that aren't anything other than a pillow. And uh, yeah, and I've got these two. Um, okay. So that was the FFOs that I can actually show you here in the flesh. Um, I did do another FFO. Um, where it's basically a new start, a new finish, <laughs> and a new FFO. So I was going to the retreat, the Mirabilia, not just Mirabilia retreat, and part of that was a mystery box. And as part of the mystery box, I'd done a gift, which was a handmade item. So my handmade item was, she says, I have a picture. Oh. So the handmade item was a well-rounded perennial pinwheel by Hands-On Hands Design. And I went with, what one did I go with? The spring one, right there. That one there. And I had the choice of either using the handmade item for it, or the something that reminds you of spring. So I went with the something that reminds me of spring because obviously it had spring on it. Now, I did change some stuff up. I will put a picture in here because I had to take pictures of it so that you could see it. And you can see there, I made some changes. So this is my throw together ornament that I've had to sort of try and get done as fast as possible, ready for my retreat, which is tomorrow. And it's only just, been finished literally this second so just to show you what I decided to go with because I needed a handmade object for my mystery box so uh, I decided to go with this one because I thought that one would be the easiest one so hands-on design well-rounded perennial pinwheels but I didn't necessarily have all the supplies or all the finishing type stuff so and I didn't have well, I had the called for threads, but I thought I would change it up a little bit. So I decided to go with a couple of classic colour works. So Blackbird and Bean Shoot, no, Bean Sprout. And also an Avera Schwa, which oh, I'll put below, which is the pink, because I can't remember for the life of me. I used it all up on this project. So, um, so I tried to make a round, and I think it worked. I mean, it is round... Um, I done my own called in, tried to follow um, Bonner's, Bonner's tutorial on the called in. So yeah, there's my called in. Um, I don't think the hanger turned out that well, but to be honest, like I say, this is like last minute throw together that I, that I needed to do just so that I could have a handmade object for my mystery box. I didn't think it would be take as long as it did to stitch, in all fairness. So that was the colour fabric I went on the back because I thought it matched the green on the front. And I didn't have any green thread to match on the, on the trim. So it is what it is. I probably would have liked to have put some pins or something else on the top because I'm not particularly happy with the finish on the top. But... Like I say, it was a last minute throw together. It's probably not as central as it could be. Yeah, you know me. You know me and my finishing. I'm just not very good at it, but yeah, there we go. So that's going into the mystery box and getting wrapped up along with a load of other stuff, ready for the retreat for tomorrow. And needless to say, I'm nowhere near ready. I've got a whole day, um, or half a day conference today. Uh, and then I've got loads and loads of work to do because I'm not working tomorrow. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to have any time until tonight to actually pack, get everything wrapped, throw everything in the car and then be ready to leave at seven o'clock in the morning. So what did I stitch it on? I stitched this on, on a 32 count Confederate grey Weeks Dye Works linen. And then obviously I switched out the colour of the threads just to be different. And then I used the Vonna, the Twisted Stitchers, um, called in. I made my own called in, just like she does, um, and put a cord on it and then put the little hangy thing on it. So, yeah, so I've 
I had another FFO, but that one was literally started and finished. So the pinwheel, the pinwheel was a new start on the 8th of October and I stitched on it one, two, three, five days and then I FFO'd it. So yeah, it was super quick, super, super quick, which is really unheard of for me. That's really quite rare. So so there we go. So that is all my FFOs, of which I feel really quite smugly proud, considering there's very little stitching to show you. Um, so what else did I stitch on, I hear you say? So first up, we have the lovely alternative reality. So she got some love. And alternative reality is a heaven and earth design. Um, and I'm stitching this on a 25 count magic guide in ecru and this is in one over one full cross and where I've got pictures of where you last saw it you should be seeing them now and here is where we are at so I've basically been working my way across this section here um, with the intention that I'm going to bring this diagonal down to match here and then I'll literally come down here start the diagonal and then I'm going to do diagonal diagonal block stitching so don't get confused when I say that I'm not doing diagonal stitching I still work my 10 by 10 blocks as you can see I'm still working my 10 by 10 blocks but I'm stitching my 10 by 10 blocks diagonally so yeah, very, very happy with the progress there. So we're, we're slowly but surely working our way across here. But like I say, I'm not getting as much stitching done as I would like. And every single time I sit down to do something, something else comes up. You know when it's just like, I don't know. I always say in the summer I don't get much stitchy time. But this year it seems, it seems to be sort of, all the time at the moment there's, there's always something whether it be that my husband wants me to try and help him upstairs doing the build work or that I'm doggy sitting or that I'm doing something with my mum or that there's shopping that needs to be done or housework needs to be done or work work needs to be done you know you know what it's like I can't complain I know I shouldn't complain but I do <laughs> so alternative reality what did that get so alternative reality got four days worth of stitching so not a lot but it got a touch. Next up we have, <clears throat> she says, if I can move all this stuff without it going everywhere. I've got piles of stuff everywhere. So next up we have my Elizabeth Weston by Hands Across the Sea. So here is a picture of what it will look like when it's done and this is the one that had the restart so it was done on a 32 count was it a 32 count or a 28 count pole stitches fabric um here yeah, i've got it in here what was it so it was originally a 32 count a 32 count um pole stitches linen in tudor rose and when I was stitching on it, I found that I just thought it looked a bit too big and blocky. So I changed it out and we went with an x Designs custom fabric on a 36 count. And excuse the threads, I've got a bit of hanging going on. Now I just need to work out which way round, which way round is it? I think it's this way. I think this is the way. This is the way. So here is where I have got to, and like I say, I absolutely love the fabric. I absolutely love the way the stitches look on this. It, it doesn't look big and blocky at all now, so I'm very, very happy. So I've been working on this section here, and some more of the border, but like I say, token gesture. But something is better than nothing, in my opinion. So Elizabeth Weston, so this is being stitched with, what is it, 1 over 2. 
Um, and all of the, I'm using all of the called for threads, which are the Avera Schwarz. That is lovely. Love the Avera Schwarz. So Elizabeth Weston got two days worth of stitching. So like I say, not massive amounts, but something was better than nothing. So that is where we got to with that one. The next one that I worked on was my Winter by the Cricut Collection. Um, where should we put this? That one's over here on my Potoki stand. Let's get rid of that, shall we? So where I've got pictures again where you last saw it, then I will input them. I'm not going to take this off of its little Q-snap. I don't think I've got anything else beyond the N. And I've been working on this on my streams as well. So um, I think the I think the N is is sort of the most. I'm sorry if you can hear banging in the background. That's fireworks. Here in the UK, it appears that people just like to set off fireworks between Halloween and um, bonfire night just for the sake of it so we've just got fireworks every night at the moment um so like i say so there's nothing i haven't done anything before the end so it's then end that way and i've been working on this there's some back stitch required here a little bit more back stitch and bits and pieces here but yeah progress is progress but in all honesty other than other than whatever i did on the last live which i think was the door um, um, or maybe some of this this next letter. I haven't really touched this. What I have decided though was For those of you that watch my lives I think the last live stream that I did was where we done a test stitch or it might not have been it might have been the one before that so we test stitched um, the floche what is floche you're asking I can tell so the floche floche is basically it's still a DMC but it's a different type of thread and I done a comparison of which I am actually I have actually recorded a video where I stitched the different types of thread on the different counts of fabric where I've used DMC normal normal cotton DMC like you sit stranded type um, in blank I've done the same in B5200 um, I then done sulky thread um, and then along with the floche as well so that I could get a comparison of how they all stitch up on different count fabrics and which one I actually like the best because I do have a very huge pet height of the DMC white now this for me was a bit of a game changer it is thicker it does come as a single stranded a single stranded thread rather than a six stranded thread but that said I'm I think I'm converted in all honesty um, and one of the one of the things that I think it's going to be great for is you remember when I stitched the snowman I wasn't overly happy with the coverage because again it's just the DMC well what I started to do was go back over with one strand half cross over the top of my existing DMC which has made it much more fluffy and much more coverage so I've done a few just to see what it would look like. Absolutely love how that looks. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Because he's a snowman, it's totally fine. So I'm going to go over the top of all the white in the snowman with the floche. Here it is. With my floche. And it's literally one strand, just the top leg. So it's basically like half cross. I'm just going to go back over everything in white. It doesn't matter that it's going to be a bit more puffy than the, the rest of the stitching because he's a snowman. So a little bit of texture and a little bit of depth. I haven't got a problem with that at all. So in fact, that is something I could sit and do tonight. There's, there's no reason why I should just keep putting that off. But yeah, so winter got one, two, three, four days. But when I'm saying four days of stitching, like I say, I don't get to sit and just stitch endlessly for the day. When I say a day, that, that is just a touch. It may only get, I don't know, five minutes. It could get an hour, but yeah. 
most of the time in if I only if I'm only stitching in the evenings and I don't get time to do any stitching during my lunch break or on the weekend in all honesty about an hour of stitching that's all I'm managing to get done at the moment because when I sit down and do my stitching I'm so tired that I'm, I'm like no I can't do it because I'm just going to mess it up so yeah don't know what's come over me super tired these days um what else did we stitch on um, 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 um. So we also stitched on Welcome Christmas by The Drawn Thread. And this is the one that I have set up in my study so that if I get a chance whilst I'm on a conference call, there's nothing sort of for me to do and I'm just sitting listening, um, I can listen and do this. So here's a picture of what it should look like. With the intention, of course, that because this one is Welcome Christmas, that I should get it done before Christmas. But in all honesty, I don't think it's looking very likely. It might be Christmas 2022 and not Christmas 2021. Um, you've seen where, I, where you last saw it. About now you should have seen where you last saw it. Ignore the hanging threads. You know me, do love a hanging thread. So this is where I've got to. So I'm currently working on the um, stockings and the bit that I love about these drawn threads is that they they chart the stockings here. That can be charted so that you could do it two over two like the rest of the stitching or I can do it one over one. So of course, being me, I went with the harder option. So at the moment I am stitching my stockings she says, I can't see what you can see. One over one, but I am absolutely loving how that's looking. Absolutely love it. Love that, love that. Um, the fabric that I'm stitching this on, she says, it's a pole stitches, it's a pole stitches fabric. And it is a 28 count Lugana in the colourway Pearl. So that one has been getting some love in the study as and when I can. So Welcome Christmas got, um, how many days did this get? Got three days worth of stitching. I think there's more. I think there's actually four days on there. But if we're looking at like October, what I actually stitched in October, then it was only three days worth of stitching. But like I say, it's Welcome Christmas. I think it might be Welcome Christmas 2022, not 2021. But we will aim for 2021. Um, what else have we stitched on? Um, so next up is my Frosty, for it, um, Frosty Knot Garden by Chatelaine. And this one is stitched on oh, an even weave. I think it's a 28 count even weave. I'll put the details here and in the description box below because I can't remember for the life of me. So Chatelaine Frosty Knot Garden got two days worth of stitching. So again, minimal, minimal amount of stitching on this one. So here is where we have got to on this one so yeah not massive amounts of stitching but it's a nice little start and we don't have a problem with that although I must admit I was sitting there thinking you know what I, I, it, it dawned on me that I haven't worked on evening in the park for ages so I think I need to make a conscious effort that Evening in the Park will get some love um, this coming month because, yeah, I mean, I, I keep saying it's close, but it, it's not really close, but it does need, you know, it, it's not getting any closer if I'm not actually stitching on it, is it? So, so that is that. What else have I stitched on? Um, we've also stitched on... Um, the castles in the air this has only had one evening of stitching admittedly so castles in the air is a long dog sampler about now you should be seeing what it looks like but 
it's basically this design. So it's this design, but I'm doing it on a different colorway. And I am using Silks For You. Here's my Silk For You. And this is Silks For You PR161. So that is my Silks. And then I'm using Petite Treasure Braid, I think it is in various colours of pink and um, silvers and blacks just to add a bit of detail no rhyme or reason of how I'm doing it I just yeah just picking bits to stitch in different colours and this is on a chromatic alchemy 25 count Lugana in the colourway Georgia so like I say it hasn't had a lot I'm, I'm not going to unravel the whole thing because it's on its Q-snap um, as you can see there's there's your bling so the last time we saw it I think I'd stitched down to about here so literally I've just done this section here is how much I've stitched on that and you can see there's there's bits of bling in there but that is where I've got to and again I need to try and make more of a conscious effort to do a bit of stitching on this there's my little mite my little needle minder by um, Pedro Plax. Love that. So yeah, just a little bit of love on this one. So that is the whips. I know, it's shocking isn't it, really. A whole month and not really that much to show you. However, there's lots of other stuff to show you. So what else to tell you? So we have another new start. So this is based on some stuff that I got and I got totally enabled on the Mirabilia retreat. And whilst at the retreat, I couldn't help myself but be led down a rather large rabbit hole. <laughs> and I saw so much beautiful stuff and was totally enabled that I fell head over heels in love with one of the Bella Filipinas, uh, Mayari. So if you haven't seen that, this is what it will look like. But there is a small issue, people. So this is the design and it's charted. So the Bella Filipinas are charted for a 14 count opalescent Ada. Um, where is it? So their suggestion is a 14 count uh, Ada opalescent in the colorway Cosmos by Bee Stitch Me Hand Dyed Fabrics. Now Bee Stitch With Me Hand Dyed Fabrics don't ship to the UK or at least it doesn't let me on their website. So I found the particular, the particular one. I wasn't going to do it on 14 count admittedly. I was going to go with either the 16 or the 18 count. Um, but... Yeah, needless to say, couldn't get my hands on it. So I did get some fabric whilst I was at the stitching retreat by Sparklies. And it is a, she says, dun, 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 dun. I think it is a 32 count, it is 32 count linen in the colorway Gothic opalescent. And I did make a start on it. So here is the progress she says i think it's this way up so you can see the opalescent on the fabric now the problem is is i can't see the fabric i really really struggled to stitch on this fabric as much as i love this fabric i love the purple i love how dark it was it's just yeah it's just a lot harder to see the holes than I anticipated. I even went to a whole extreme of buying a whole new magnifying light type thing, which I'll show you in my haul as well. And even though that did improve matters, it didn't make it enjoyable. And I might, I can't see me actually completing the stitching on this, on this fabric. So I reached out to Kate at Sparkly's, of which I have to say, she is very, very helpful. Um, we went backwards and forwards. I tried to ask her the questions of like, well, what's the difference between the even weave and between the linen? 
Um, and one of the problems with is because I've always sort of gone to the even weave and have a natural preference of even weave over the linen, as she said, the linen actually dyes darker like this. The even weave dyes a lot lighter. It's not light, but it's still a lot lighter than this. So I won't get, it's a bit hard to show you because there's light coming through, but there you go. Um, Although it will, it will sort of look like this, it will still be a lot lighter than this is, which is not what I was looking for. So after much discussion, I agreed that there was... So this one is the colourway Gothic, and there was another one in the colourway, I think it was Nova. So Nova is more of a really dark navy, and this one is obviously more of a dark purpley black. So she has decided... Well, I've asked her to dye me two pieces of 28 count so obviously I'm making this is a 32 count so I'm getting it in the easier count for me to see because it's dark anyway um but I've also said to her don't I don't want the opalescent because I think the opalescent makes it harder however I am going with the 28 count linen because the linen will still have the same color as this the only difference will be it won't have that gorgeous gorgeous sparkle which I'm absolutely gutted about because I do really like the sparkle um but it's just I just can't not on a 32 count maybe if I went with an opalescent on a 28 count it would be easier but I'm not prepared to make that or run that risk and then order a 28 count opalescent because I would then have to order the 28 count non-opalescent in the linens so that I could see which one I could do so I've basically gone with the linens in the 28 count in Nova and in the Gothic, the non-opalescent version. So that will become a restart. I'm gutted because I can't wait. I'm itching, absolutely itching to make a start on her. I love the way it's charted. I love the way she looks. I love the fact that there's a whole ton of bling in there. A whole ton of bling. I mean, here's the pack. So this is... This is the pack of threads and the pack of beads and, but that's all the Krynex. Look at those colours. Love those. And this pack has actually come as a kit from um, Hawkins Hobbies. So she does the full packs for the Bella Filipinas. There's loads of bling in there. Loads of bling in there. So yeah, so I'm looking forward to that, but that... So, Bella Filipina, I started that one on the 18th of October. And that was two days worth of stitching. And that was when I realised that there was a problem with the uh, fabric. So, I'm just waiting for the change in the fabric stuff. Get the new fabric, because she's hand dyeing it as we speak. So, it's a case of sitting and waiting. Have to be patient, people. Have to be patient. Um, what else to tell you? So whilst I was at the retreat and I said to, I mentioned something at the end of the video when I was walking you around where the shops were and I said for those of you that were you know always asking me about my soda stitch um, high heels collection so this is the one I'm referring to so here it is now you can see this one hasn't got the special glass hence the reason why you can see all the reflection so let me see if I can sit down with this one um, and get it out of the glare. There we go. So this is the picture of the High Heels collection that you often see um, behind me when I'm doing my Stitch With Me's and my lives. Um, and like I say, it's a soda stitch. And so many people have asked me, where can I get my hands on that chart, Teresa? And I kept saying to you, I'm sorry, it's discontinued. And I have no idea how to get them because I can't get my hands on the other two. So basically, Soda Stitch High Heels Collection came as three, three sets. So you had three sets of three shoes. This was collection one and there was a collection two and a collection three. However, there was someone that reached out to me and I'm trying to remember for the life of me what their name was. And it's, uh, it's gone from my mind. I'll put in the description box here and just underneath. Someone reached out to me and said, Teresa, if you go onto this website, you can still get the Soda Stitch collection, although you can't get collection number one, which obviously for me doesn't matter because I don't need collection number one because I've already stitched it. 
but collection two and three is still available. Well, I, I done like the pro forma type thing and then looked at the price, oh my. Um, but when I was at the retreat, unbeknownst to me, the lovely um, Kate at Sparkly's is a supplier for the Soda Stitch. When I had a little chat with her, she said, leave it with me, let me see what I can do. Um, and she came back to me. And basically what she has said is, she has to have a big enough order to place with Soda Stitch to be able to order these charts. So, if you are one of the people that are looking to do either one or a couple of those, admittedly, it won't be the exact same, the exact same shoes as mine. If you would be interested or you've been looking for those charts and you, you know, you're happy not to have sort of three, three and three, but you're happy with two sets of three, at least one set, um, you can still get them if we all place an order with Kate at Sparkly's and we can get the order, I think she said she has to have an order that's over £250 before she's allowed to place the order with Soda Stitch. So if there's enough of us with enough interest, then she can order, like do, us, do an order like almost straight away for these charts before they get discontinued. What worries me is if, if number one is now discontinued and there's only two and three left, chances are it's only while stocks last. So if that is the case, what I'm thinking is the I've had so many people that have asked about the high heel collection that if there's enough of us that want to place an order and we can get provisional orders in with Kate at Sparkly's, she can place an order. But what she did say to me was, if there isn't quite enough to make it so that she can place an order, it's a case that I will just have to wait until she gets the requirement for an order for £250 for Soda Stitch and she'll be able to place the order and I can get the high, she'll order the High Heels collection for me as part of it. But for those of you that had asked the question, you can still get them. Like I say, um, Kate at Sparkly's, so her website is currently not up or live at the moment, but you can reach her by email. So if you email her, your request or interest for the High Heels Collection Soda Stitch and mention that I mentioned it on my video. I'll put her email address here and in the description box below. If you want to pop her a little email over, if there's enough of us, we can get our hands on them and she can order them for us. So I thought I would just make you all aware they haven't discontinued, we can still get them. There's just a way that we have to go about getting them and with your help Maybe we can all get our hands on the charts for those of you that are interested There is a lot of haul because there's lots of stuff and There's also lots of stuff that I purchased whilst I was at the retreat. I say lots. That's, that's an exaggeration So where should we start? So first of all So whilst I was at the retreat I came across these lovely little Madame Chantilly charts and they were at the retreat as soon as I saw them I was like they're just so not like me but I was like wow I love those I absolutely love them so one is called celebrate Easter and one is called celebrate spring so here is celebrate spring how cute is that I absolutely love that and I know I seem to have gone on this crazy seasonal thing that everything I'm buying at the moment seems to be seasonal but it's just too cute and then the other one is celebrate Easter so here it is that's the other one love 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 and I love the fact that they're like little tea cake trays and then you've got things like the chickens and the and the what look like geese on there and yeah I'm loving I'm loving all the little bits and pieces on there and I really like these ones these the spring one the spring one's got like the birds on it it's got the little rabbits in it and it's got the little lambs the little lambs there on the corner love it so yeah so totally enabled by these charts and while I was there, I was like, well, I wonder what fabric. Well, Chris, it would be rude when you're sitting there looking at actual fabrics not to buy something. So I decided to go with Sparkly's Slightly Nutty 32 Count Even Weave. And here it is. Sorry about the crinkling. It's sort of a pinkish colour. It's like a pink, but it's, it's very, very, very pale. So I was thinking that colour for one of those... Um, Madame Chantilly's 
and the other one was Sparkly's Oatmeal. Again, this one is a 28 count. So there you go. If I put them both side by side, you can see the variation in colour. So one is an oatmeal creamy colour and one is like a pinky, pinky pal colour. So I picked myself up a couple of bits of fabric because it's rude not to. Um, what else did we get? We also got... Um, Hawkins Hobbies do a lot of the Mill Hill buttons and beads and seasonal stuff. I quite liked the idea of doing something for the kitchen. So I picked up this one, which is Espresso. There it is. Because I was thinking I've got like a little wall that these would fit nicely on. And they do them in like latte, uh, I think it was macchiata, um, espresso. Uh, cappuccino so yeah so I was thinking I quite like those so I picked one up when I get to it I do not know but it's the whole kit it's got like the little the little button bead thing and all the threads and the beads there but I know that a lot of people sort of just pick these up and do them whilst they're on calls or whatever so I thought that's that's a good option for me so I got one of those um, there was also a tambola that took place at the retreat and I won a lavender and lace I have to say it's it's I don't think it's something I would stitch song of Christmas there you go look and it's festive as well there we go come on I mean it's very nice but in all honesty I don't think that that would be something that I would stitch on so that may become a giveaway. What do you think? In fact, I'll, let's do it as a giveaway, shall we? I mean, it was, I, I just won it in a, in a tambola. It's not something I'm gonna stitch on. So what should we say? What should we say, people? Um, if you say the word, song in a comment of this video i will put you into the draw for this chart it is just a chart see but if you would like song of christmas mention the word song in your comment i will do a random generator picker it doesn't matter where in the world you are if you put it in and you win it i will send it out to you so there we go Nice little giveaway thrown in there for fun. For fun, people. What else to tell you? So whilst I was at the retreat, obviously we had our um, retreat needle minder, which we could select. I went with the tree one. So it's the um, Mirabilia, not only, but also. And there's the retreat badge that was created by... Uh, Denkai Designs, Sharice from Denkai Designs. So she was there with all her beautiful stuff. I have to confess, I did not purchase only my um, retreat needle minder. I had to show some restraint somewhere, right? Well, at least that's what I tell myself. Um, also, whilst I was at the retreat, we had um, a mystery box. Um, like I said, the perennial round finish that I did was for the mystery box that I made for someone. I also got a box which was glorious, um, a lovely lady done mine, it had a knitted frog which I've got to be honest I've left it in the other room, I'll have to show you another day, um, I had a felted, so a felting robin, so you do some felting, I've never done felting, so that, that'll be nice, I got some, um, some daffodil bulbs for a reminder of spring, but I also got these really cute, so that, one of the things was that it had to be a charity related or purchased item. So she got me this lovely, lovely note cards or blank cards of hedgehogs. Look at those, so cute. So I've got those. Um, also I got some fabric. It's always nice to have a bit of fabric. I love this one. This one is Sparkly's Fabric, Fabric of the Month, Special January 2020, number one. And this is in a 28 count opalescent even weave. Loving that. It's got a bit of sparkle. 
it does seem to be that I've gone from having nothing but blue fabrics to nothing but green fabrics these days, which I think is quite funny. Um, what else did I get? So also while we was there, um, Marnie's mixed bag was there, although I didn't show it on the video because she was there on the Saturday and not there on the Sunday, and I did recording on the Sunday. But she does the Q-snaps, and one of the things that, because I've started to sort of convert my desk stand a bit more, um, and using the Q-snaps when I'm sat at my desk in my office, um, she does the 14 inch extender kits. So you can convert an 11 by 11 to a 14 by 14. Now, I don't think it has to be an 11 by 11 to turn it into a 14 by 14. I think no matter what size you go with, you just add these extenders, And then obviously you just wouldn't if if it was if it wasn't sort of an eleven by eleven and it was smaller, but you wanted to make it a bit bigger, you just wouldn't use the clips over the top. You'd use the existing clips that are on it. But I decided to do this one because I have got an eleven by eleven Q snap. It would be quite nice to have something that's just marginally bit bigger. Um, so yeah, so I picked up one of those, which was lovely. Um, also, whilst I was at the retreat, I saw, I got totally enabled, totally, totally enabled by the lovely Mel at the retreat. And she was stitching, and I showed it in the, um, in the retreat video, she was stitching a Mirabilia, and it was called... A botanical garden which I'd never seen in person and I'd never seen it before but when I saw it I was like I have to stitch that of course I have to stitch it because it's all about flowers but how could I not how could I not stitch this how did I not even know about this or see it I have to say I'm like how is that even possible so never needless to say I have got the chart she had such a great idea with the fabric. So she went with a fabric called Dragon Be Gone. I think it was called, yeah, Dragon Be Gone. Um, and it's like a green colour. And it looked, the colours just looked like they so worked on there. So I have to say that I reached out to her and said, can you remind me what, what that fabric was? Because I'm going to have to steal your idea because it looks so good. Um... I'm going to have to steal your idea and use the same fabric. So she has given me the fabric. So now I need to reach out to Kate at Sparkly's because it is a Kate by Sparkly's fabric um, and get some more fabric dyed up for that. But yeah, so that will become a new start. But I absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. This is the problem with going to these retreats. You get so enabled that before you know it, you've just fell down all of these rabbit holes. Not that I need any help doing that. Um, so next up, what other rabbit holes? So the the Irish stitcher, I think it was Ema, Ema, uh, yeah, I think that's how you say her name. If I've got your name wrong, I am so, so sorry, my love. The Irish stitcher, she is a fellow floss tuber. One of the projects that she was working on, which I didn't manage to show you on the video from the retreat, is that she was working on one of the black work patterns by... Um, peppermint purple now you all know I hate backstitch but I hate backstitch when I'm trying to do limbs and faces where you know you go in a you're not you're not following lines so to speak well some of the peppermint pepper black work patterns are designed to go on Ada's and other fabrics so that they don't go like fractional stitching or fractional backstitch or anything too out there and crazy so I thought well you know what I've got such a pet hate for backstitch because of the craziness and it's only ever really been on things like my mirabilias that I've had my experiences of awfulness with it that I thought maybe I need to I need to show myself it's really not as hard or or as horrible as I think it is um so I fell down the rabbit hole after seeing one of hers that she done or that she was working on I haven't gone with the exact same one. I went with the mini rainbow quilt. Um, it's stitched. These are 73 by 73, 29 colours. And like I say, I've gone with the mini rainbow quilt. This is what it will look like. So it's not too complicated. This one is designed to be stitched on an Ada. So therefore it's all, you know, 
easy back stitch. But I thought, you know what? I quite like the look of that. So we'll give that a go and we'll see. So if I can't do this, because this is really, in all intents and purposes, black work is back stitch or a version of it. Camera malfunction, gotta love it. If I can't do this, then I'm never gonna be able to do any type of black work or back work, like back stitch. So yeah, so again, thank you so much for the enabling. Like I really needed anything else. Look at the state of my bed. Look at it, there's just stuff everywhere. <laughs> Oh, I also went on a purchasing spree, the Nutmeg Company. I'd never heard of them, but basically uh, it's a website called www.3dcrossstitch.co.uk. I'll put it in the link below. Um, I don't know how I found it. They were just, I was Googling one day and fell across them and, well, I thought it was a great idea. So one of them that I decided to get, to get out of what they did was... It's called the Nutmeg Company. It's a three-dimensional cross-stitch design paper cross-stitch greeting card. And it's called Driving Home for Christmas. So I quite like that. See? So we got ourselves that. And also, which I thought was super cute, is this gingerbread tree. So it's part of their Christmas collection. It's called Gingerbread Village. And this one's the gingerbread tree. It's on a 16 count Ada, stranded cotton, beads, trims, felt, plastic canvas, needles, charts and full instructions. And you turn it into like a, one of those. So you can see it's got all of the bits in it. So yeah, so I, I thought, oh, that's, that's different. So I picked one of those up as well. And it was a different company. It's always nice to sort of have a little go at something different. When I'll find time to do all these little somethings different, I do not know. But it's always a nice thought, right? Um, what else? So, the lovely um, Morty. She is also a floss tuber. I'll put a link to her floss tube here. When I was saying about I was looking for my buttons to go with um, the drawn thread Welcome Christmas... She mentioned that she had some buttons, like lots of little buttons, um, and she sent me a little card and some gifts for my birthday. So she sent me the buttons. I won't show you inside the card. So she sent me this lovely little card, and attached to the card, she sent me these little buttons, which are great. So thank you so, so much. I love there's one in there that's just like a little red heart, which is gorgeous. And I'm sure I'll find lots and lots of projects for these to, to go on. But look at that little red heart one. How cute is that little button? Um, but the problem is, is because of the type of project that Welcome Christmas is, it needs lots of the same coloured buttons, which obviously these are all different coloured buttons. So these will come in handy for other projects. So thank you so much, my lovely. Very much appreciated. But she also said that she was going to start doing, um, like, sales. And part of her sales was things like the uh, scissor fob and project bag pull. So she's made me these. I can't remember. What is it? Hair Moon Crafts, I think she's called herself. So she's made me a project. A little... I love the little teapots. So me, especially the fact that I'm always drinking tea. Oh my God, look, it nearly matches my nails as well. How cool is that? <laughs> Must have been in sync. Um, so, scissor fob and project bag zip pull. Lovely. How cute. Thank you so, so much for that. I will put them on my pink bag, I think. I have, I have another pink bag. And, well, you can never have too many pairs of scissors that have scissor keeps right well not in my world anyway so thank you ever so much for that um like i said whilst i was at the stitching retreat i was totally enabled and one of the things that i was i have been looking for is a magnifying light now you know i bought that little daylight lamp the one that sits on the table and bends over and i was like this will be the deal breaker but actually that tiny tiny little circle thing was so small that it didn't work but whilst i was searching I did find, I think this one is called a pure light. I'll put the link to where I got mine below here. And this one is a three in one and it's got a great light on it. And it's also got a floor stand, it's got a desk stand and it's got 
a clip that I can clip onto the side of my desk, which is great. And it's a nice big, look at the size of that magnifier. It's a lovely big magnifier. And it, this light is so bright, so bright. And the fact that it just sort of bends down to wherever I want it, and I can manipulate it and bend it, it was, yeah. It's been a bit of a deal breaker, I have to say. Especially now that it's getting darker earlier. Although we changed our clocks last week, last weekend. Um, although that happened, it's still been darker in the evening, but lighter in the mornings. So this has been, yeah, this, this has been a game changer for me. So loving that. What else did I purchase? So also, you all know how much I love my scroll bars these ones the scroll bars and I also like my little corner desk stand that I've been using for my lives uh, the Larry desk clamp because it's on the desk where I'm sat in front of the computer and when I'm working it's great but it only really held the Q snaps but I found this now it doesn't look anything I have to say it's this so it's got like a little clip there and another one there and then this bit slides up and down and then you clamp it to your scroll bar so you put your scroll bar in there and a scroll bar in there and then this whole thing slides through that Larry clamp the corner clamp and you can put your scroll bars onto the Larry corner clamp on the desk which I was like game changer game changer people um, for me that's amazing especially for doing my lives or if I'm sitting and stitching in the office or I want to sit up at a table or a desk I don't always want to stitch on something that's in a Q-snap I like to stitch on my bigger projects you know like evening in the park or alternative reality I can now sit and do at a desk obviously it's not attached to it right now because I wanted to show it to you but I've, sit I've took some pictures for you so that you can have a little look at the setup and how it works so I've took some pictures here so that you can see what my little desk setup is. So when you're wondering how I'm doing things when I'm doing my Stitch With Me's and I'm working on my scroll bars up at my desk, this is what I will be using. And I've used it a number of times already this last sort of week or so and it's just been game changer. Yeah, absolutely love that. So I'm no longer just restricted to working on things on Q-snaps in the office. The Floche, the Floche thread. For those of you that keep asking me the question, where did I get my floche from? I couldn't help myself. I went and got some more floche. So I've got white. You know how much I hate the 310 black? Because the, the um, B5200 in the floche was such a deal breaker for me, I went ahead and threw caution to the wind and ordered two hanks of the black. These haven't been... Um, I haven't sorted these out. These are as they come. So these are like a big, a big circle. But unlike a six strand cotton, these are a single strand cotton. Um, and what I do is I treat these very much like I would treat my, say, silks for you or... So the way I handle this, this hank is very similar to the way that I would handle a silks for you. So the only difference between this and a normal six stranded cotton is that this is a single strand versus a six strand but it turns up exactly the same it's a hank it's a big circle you don't want to mess with it whilst it's still in its circle because it does make a whole hot mess so what i do is i separate it and i do a very very loose braid and then i can just pull the thread from the top this is what it started off like and this is how I deal with it just like this is my silks for you Hank so this is the six strand six stranded cotton but I basically do the same thing so I've got one there and then I've got the other one there which is a full Hank so that and that is what makes up a full Hank of silks for you but I treat this exactly the same way as I treat this now I have done a video where I've shown you how I tame my hank if you like um, but when I recorded it for some bizarre reason because I was trying to do it from two different angles so that you could actually see what I was doing um, 
there's a little bit of sort of the light flashes on and off so I've tried to re-record it I should really try and edit it and load it up but I was going to try to re-record it but if you would prefer to just see it as it is however I've done it if anyone is interested in how to handle your sack your silk threads that turn up in a hank or in a big circle like this and how I turned that into something like this and you're interested let me know and I will just edit up the video that I've already made and pop it up so that it will help you so the floche I have to say was a much more trickier way of getting it here in the UK so the white the white and the ecru I managed to get here in the UK so I managed to get the hanks of white um, from a company it was called Jenny Adin Christie specialized embroiderer I've put it under here and I'll put the link in the description box below for those of us in the UK or that would like to purchase and can't find it anywhere else the white and the ecru you can get from her the black on the other hand was a whole nother ball game and everyone was just like where do we get this where do we get this stuff because this one's in 310 and you know 310 is another one another pet hate that I've got with the DMC range that it just doesn't seem thick enough um and I don't get the coverage that I like. I threw caution to the wind because I'm the most impatient person in the world. Um, I actually went on to Etsy and purchased this through Threads. I think it's called Thread and Links on Etsy. I'll put the link here. And again, it will be in the description box below. They do almost what looks like their full range. The full range of flows can be purchased from there. Um, because I was ordering from the States and I knew I was going to have to pay the shipping and the tax and all the all the extras, I actually bought two hanks of it because that way I know I've got it. But yeah, like I say, I got the black and just the white purely because they're the two that I have the biggest pet hate for. So we've wrapped up October. It's been a whirlwind of things this month with very little output of stitching, but... I do feel like I've got all the things. I really don't feel like in November I'm going to need to buy anything. So that's it in a nutshell, people. Uh, like I say, there is a knitting update. That will be the next video that will follow. But that is the stitching for October. But thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for all the lovely support as always. So until next time, people. Bye-bye for now.